Good evening, everyone. Okay, it's Wednesday. Let's see what tonight's bedtime story is about. I don't think I can financially catch up from Dave Ramsey. We're going to step back about five months. All right, I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I would like to thank you for joining me. Let's go ahead, take this all the way down. Tomorrow is Thursday, which is one step closer to Friday. For those of you who follow up Monday through Friday work week, not everybody does. All right, let's do it. Oh, Ramar is with us in Canada. Hi, Ramar. Hey, oh, Ramar, how are you? Good, how are you? (laughs) Better than I deserve. How can we help? Uh, Well, um, I'm actually ecstatic to be on this phone call. I can't believe I'm talking to you guys, but... Um, I'm calling from New Brunswick, Canada. Uh, I actually moved with my family and my two babies, three and four, from Toronto, escaping pretty much what was happening over there. Uh, a normal run down home was $2 million. We didn't want to get into a mortgage like that. And because we had the freedom of uh, remote jobs, we decided, well, let's move. Uh, we wanted a more conservative place as well. So it's been... I hope they weren't one of those people that said, hey, we're working remote, let's move. They move and then find out that their job calls them back. That happened to a lot of people, you know. Amazing living here. But we purchased a house, $400,000 last year. Uh, It has been a year and a half. Um, And I feel like I'm on baby step number zero. (laughs) We are reading the book and we're doing everything we can, but... We had very bad advice with our mortgage. We went on a variable rate last year, and I just, I feel hopeless. I don't know how to even get through this. So we've done what we can, and we got the book from the church, um, Total Money Makeover. We've been reading it, but with two little ones, it's been tough. And I just, I don't know how to deal and cope with, I guess, paying the mortgage when we initially budgeted for $1,600 and we ended up at a fixed rate of actually, we fixed the rate last week and we ended up at $3,200. Okay. So if I got this straight, they moved, they thought, but this is only five months ago. They thought they had, they had, there were, they were, they moved because of remote work. Okay. So they thought they had signed up for a sixteen hundred dollar a month mortgage, but instead they wound up with thirty two hundred. Holy cow! Did they get one of those mortgages that you know like balloons up, blows up basically over the years? Wow. Three thousand two hundred dollar mortgage, and what is your income? Uh, so my husband makes eighty five thousand dollars a year, and I recently started uh, I work uh, with the same company actually, and I'm making. Thirty-three ninety. Uh, I'm not on payroll, but I am. I've been with them for ten months, and they are willing to put me on payroll. It's just it hasn't come to that yet. Is thirty-three uh, ninety an now. hour or thirty-three thousand yeah. nine hundred um, a year? No, thirty. So three thousand three hundred ninety monthly. Plus, wow. Um, eighty-five thousand dollars a year that my husband earns, which is I believe it's forty-nine hundred. A month, mm-hmm. so we're roughly around eight thousand to almost nine thousand dollars a month. Yeah, you're about eighty five hundred a month take home pay, and you have a three thousand two hundred dollar mortgage, which leaves five thousand mm-hmm. dollars to pay the rest of your bills. Why can you not do that? But are we thinking? Are we thinking taxes? You know, Ramsey often leaves that out. I know, right? I, I, I we feel the same, but unfortunately, since we got our home last year. We had, uh, I don't know why we came up with the bright idea that we wanted to finish the basement that we had in this house because we wanted to rent it out. We said, well, maybe. I, boy, this, this, this lady can tell a long story. Okay. So if I understand, I predict where this is going. All right. I predict that um well first of all i'm gonna predict that dave didn't take out taxes so we will do that okay um but i predict that if they could have made the mortgage even at 3200 if they could have made it they've probably overspent and now she says they're talking about i think remodeling the basement because they were hoping to rent it out 
that they probably did it with remodeling money that they don't have. Um, that, what is it? He makes like 85, she makes around 33 an hour. It would be tight, but technically, like Dave said, they could make it. But again, Dave leaves out the uh, taxes oftentimes, like every time. <laughs> be less, do like a side uh, income and have um, someone be downstairs. And so is it finished or not? It is. Okay, is somebody living down there? finish it. Yeah, finally. Okay, uh, and how much are they paying you? Okay, I don't hear Dave get impatient, but I, I, I think he's getting a little impatient because um, she's just kind of going on and on. This, this is one of those people that would literally like to get from point A to point B. You're going to you're going to have to follow all the other letters of the alphabet first. <laughs> OK, and so that's another twelve hundred on the eighty five hundred. Now, exactly. what, what other bills have you got other than let me back that up one? downstairs and so is it finished or not it is okay somebody living down there finish it yeah finally okay uh, and how much are they paying you of being twelve hundred dollars okay and so that's another twelve hundred on the eighty five hundred now they can make what, what other bills have you got other than the thirty two hundred dollars what other debt payments have you got uh insurance i believe it's 240 no i'm that's talking about debt debt oh that it's um Thirty-two thousand on a home credit line. How much is the payment on that? Uh, a lot. It's like nine hundred dollars. Eleven hundred more, maybe because we really got behind. Yeah. Okay, eleven hundred. All right, so that's forty-two, forty-three hundred. Okay, and what else? Yeah, uh, twenty thousand on a credit card, which mm-hmm. I, I don't know how it even came to that. Okay, so Omar, stop. On Here's what's going card. on. Okay, your brain is scrambled eggs on this money mm-hmm. stuff because it's you're mm-hmm. all over the place just to talk to. and and part of the reason i think she's also all over the place is um she's trying to justify she's trying to justify their expenditures all right um that that's just kind of what i'm sensing because people who really don't have control of their money they don't exactly know where their money is going a lot of the extra ad-libbing that we're hearing from her because you can see you know i don't see you know dave roll his eyes a whole lot drop his pen you know but when he does that it it means he's trying to get he's trying to find the figures or the information or whatever it is he just wants a direct answer and she's going in circles and part of that going in circles is she is justifying to herself why she's in the mess she's in along with her husband of course you know to you and that's where all your stress is coming from okay mm-hmm. so the numbers you've given me because you haven't thrown me any numbers here that don't work you've got ninety seven hundred dollars a month coming into this house counting the twelve hundred dollar rent let's take away taxes okay let's take a few grand out for taxes but it's still good money coming in okay the only numbers you've given me are thirty two hundred and eleven hundred going out so when you just start, no, right, just so get, not, not, no, 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 my turn. Just at the top of the page, write $9,700 and then write minus 3200 minus 1100 minus a little for insurance, minus some electricity and food, and then I, then you're going to go, hey, where's all my dadgum money going? Because that's where I'm going right now. I can't figure out why you're stressed out about this. You should have plenty of money. So what that tells me is, is you guys are very disorganized. Yeah, if her money is being spent, and when I say her, her and her husband's, if the household money is being spent in any fashion of this phone call, they might as well just di- drive down the street and throw $1 bills out the window or maybe ten dollar bills out the window she really doesn't know where it's going which means she it kind of, kind of like a food addict okay um, have you ever seen let me kind of you know uh, take a little u-turn or, or, or take a little fork in the road here you ever seen those videos um they're the documentaries that they do sometimes on tlc and stuff where they 
talk to someone who has a food addiction problem and that is a real addiction. Okay. And they, and the person swears up and down, look, you know what? I only eat three square meals a day. You know, I eat fruit and vegetables, yada, yada. And they put a camera in and lo and behold, you know, the person's eating all the time, but they don't see that the, the, the food addict doesn't see that they're eating all the time. She's probably in a whole lot more debt than what she is stating on here. And the fact that um, she's trying to convince herself, she's constantly justifying, well, we had to spend this because of this. And, and this, that there's a story behind all this debt. Too many stories, stories that are too long. So that's kind of what she reminds me of is someone who, you know, is, they, they technically have a hard time, they have a hard time admitting that perhaps, just perhaps they have a serious spending problem and that serious spending problem is not being accounted for because it's being dismissed by one or both of the parties meaning the husband and the wife you're very chaotic it's chaotic mm -hmm. talking to you and i'm not being mean to you but that's the that's what's happening it's the stress is in the air i can feel it and I, and honey you got to get this you guys got to get if you'll if when you push this down on the paper and transfer this financial stress into actual arithmetic, the stress will start to dissipate. Because In other words, she needs to know where her money is going. And you know, that could be scary for people to know where their money is going. Because part of what, um, at least in my experience, okay, part of getting out of debt is you have to be willing to acknowledge that, wow, you know, I spend a lot of money in this category okay that's a total luxury that's a total want it's not a need break down what the actual need categories are and you find you actually don't need that much you really don't okay um so i suspect that part of her problem is there are things she loves to spend money on but to actually sit down and do a budget for it, and like I said, I think this happens to many people, okay? You have to actually face it. Perhaps you spend a whole lot of money on your hair and your nails. You don't like to admit that you do, but if you were to add up over a 12-month period how much money you spend on hair and nails, you may find out $1,000 is going out the door every year for hair and nails. I'm just you know, giving an example, right? So you, you are not out of control here. Uh, unless you've left out entire segments in this conversation, which is possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, y you've got, th there's something about writing it down that makes it come alive and makes it get under control. So, Oromar, it's... It, 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 it makes you accountable. It makes you accountable. And that can be scary for people. I will tell you, when I paid off my mortgage, and it took me two and a half years, I paid it off uh, summer 2022, okay? I got my mortgage February 2020. It was about, it was around 50,000, 45,000 plus, you know, a few thousand for interest. Paid it off um, summer 2022, respectively. I am telling you, I knew where every freaking dime was going to get that mortgage paid off. I, I have never in my entire 56 years have I ever, ever uh, broken down that amateurized loan. I knew exactly how that mortgage was going to be paid off and where those dollars were going to come from. I, I can tell you it, it was, it was scary to some extent because I knew I was going to have to look at their areas of my life and figure out what had to be let go, you know, instead of a, it would have been nice to have traded out the, you know, 13 year old mattress, but I said, well, we're going to continue sleeping on that 13 year old mattress. All right. Um, until this mortgage gets paid off, it would have been nice to do. And yes, the mattress has since been replaced. It's about a year and a half old and it's wonderful, okay? Um, but you have to look at wh where is this money going to come from? I think she has a hard time looking at her finances because technically she does have enough, but she doesn't see that she has enough because it's being nickel and dimed out the door to fun stuff. We'd always rather buy fun stuff. Kind of like, remember that time back in high school, Ken, when you have a problem or you might do it as an adult. And you sit down and with your friend who's going to help you the problem, and you tell them the whole problem. And by the time you actually put it into cogent words, you know the answer, and it's not a problem anymore. 
They're, your friend doesn't have to say anything. They just got to look at you like you're an idiot, right? And so, um, or worse than that, you write it down. If you write yourself a report on what's going on, by the time your brain goes from jumble to verbal, and then one more step from verbal to written, you have processed this information very thoroughly, and the answer oftentimes will appear right in front of you. You're on the other end of that spectrum right now, Ori. But the hard part can be that the answer you get isn't the answer you want. And that's something that people have to be prepared for, especially when dealing with money. Okay, we can find what the answer is. Matter of fact, I think Dave's right too. A lot of the times the answer is right in front of us. We know what it is. The question is, do we want to admit it? Okay. Um, I, I know that for myself, you know, when it comes to getting out of debt, all right, at least when it came before I was out of debt, I knew what had to be done. And that was, I really, really needed to get control of the budget in a way that wouldn't sink me financially. All right. And it takes, before you can become debt free or even get control of your budget, you have to be willing to admit there's a problem with the budget. And if you can't admit even that there's a problem with the budget, then you can't create a budget to ever become debt free. And to me, it's not even just about being debt free. It's what's more important to me is even if you carry debt, is it debt that keeps you awake at night or is it debt that's a manageable? That to me is really the kind of the secret sauce because, you know, we all have some debt to some extent for the rest of our life. Okay. We have our monthly bills that have to be paid taxes, you know, insurance, yada, yada. But to me, debt freedom is really almost, it's almost more about even, you know, can you sleep at night? Okay. Cause I could carry a debt. I could technically, I could easily carry $5,000 credit card debt. I don't. Okay. But I easily could, and I wouldn't lose a wink of sleep at night. Take me about three months to pay it off. See, that's debt that would be manageable if I absolutely had to do something immediate and I had to put it on a card, okay? That debt's not going to keep me awake at night. It's that sort of thing. $110,000 student loan, yeah, that'll keep me awake at night. So you guys need a budget. That's what you need. And your, your time is not being managed well. Your kids are overrunning you. Things are, I bet your house is a mess. <laughs> and so, you know, the chaos, it's in the air. And when you get things orderly and straightened up, the calendar straight, the budget is straight, you're going to get on top of this and you're going to be able to run it's so fast because you're really doing better than it feels like you're doing to you. Your numbers are not nearly as bad as your emotions are telling you they are. Yep. Assuming those are on the only numbers. We haven't heard you know, what, what, what car payments do they have? How many cars do they have? What insurance do they have? Do the kids go to the public school or private school? Okay. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we have not heard. So yeah, based on these numbers, you know, they should technically be fine, but there's a lot of information we haven't heard yet. Yeah, what I heard is someone who's being reactive instead of proactive. Yeah. And the power in writing it down and creating this budget, Omar, what Dave's telling you is right. When you look at just that exercise where he said, all right, let's start with what's coming in. You guys have got to write down what's going out. And when you begin to get intentional, proactive versus reactive, you guys are letting every day come at you. And I don't think you have a plan at all. And Your it's emotions just are managing this. Your yeah. emotions are managing Now, I like that. The proactive versus reactive. Yeah, I like that. Not your logic. That's right. So get your critical thinking skills up. on. All right, folks. That is tonight's bedtime story. I'd like to thank you for joining me this evening. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Don't forget to subscribe. And you guys have a beautiful Wednesday night. Sleep tight, sweet dreams. Bye.